So today we're going to talk about the nine classy behaviors men always notice and find wildly attractive in women or in a woman. And let me just say this. These are those men who are emotionally grown up. So let me be clear. This isn't for those dysfunctional type of men. This isn't for those clinical uh, men who have clinical issues. This is for those emotionally grown up men. Now, before we get into this, I think it's really important to address the elephant in the room. And that is dating in our current environment can keep a person disillusioned, frustrated, or worse, giving up hope. And I was actually giving up hope of finding a suitable partner that believing that a suitable partner exists. So I'm going to read to you a blog I wrote that will illustrate this. And then we're going to dive in to these, <coughs> excuse me, classy behaviors. I said, dating in our current environment can leave a person disillusioned, frustrated, or worse, giving up hope that a suitable partner exists. The minute we connect with another human being, we make ourselves vulnerable to misalignment which is just really a nice way of saying we're not a fit for each other. After many encounters that go nowhere, one can look back and say, there's no one for me. Now, one can listen to those rah-rah coaches that will tell you that, you know, all you have to do is love yourself. And let me be honest here. I've said that myself. But the reality is, is loving oneself is, is rather hard to do. The fact is, dating is very vulnerable. Let me reframe that. Dating is a very vulnerable act. And given we are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality, <coughs> excuse me, in the dating marketplace, it's no wonder many prefer choosing not to engage in the process. Genuinely connecting with another human being at a heart-centered level is no small feat. And anyone who suggests finding a life mate is effortless, has some swamp land to sell you as well, because it takes a lot of courage to put oneself out there. And more importantly, loving oneself through all the disappointments, loving oneself through all the disappointments. So this is was on my Instagram and my Facebook post today, and it goes with the following meme. Dating today is like the Hunger Games. It's challenging, brutal, and a fight to the death, the death of our dreams and our hopes. Preparing oneself for, through personal development, self-help, and spiritual work can put the odds forever in your favor by working on yourself. Just saying. That's my meme I posted today. <clears throat> so... Loving oneself, self-love. You know, there's an interesting book um, called, look at this cover. Love yourself like your life depends on it. This is only 60, this is 59 pages. And it's all double spaced. Look at that, a lot of white space, okay? Love yourself like your life depend upon it. I cannot even figure out how to pronounce this person's name. Why does this relate to classy behaviors? Ladies, I've observed most women abandon their sovereignty and give their power away to men. They give their power away to men. And let me tell you something, to that wounded man, to that man who's got clinical issues, that sociopath, that narcissist, they are highly attracted to women who don't actually feel good about themselves. This is why I'm such a big proponent of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Not because this work is going to attract a life made in you. What it's going to do is most importantly, hopefully own your sovereignty. Because as I said before, women oftentimes give their power away to men. And I think this is almost conditioning way back to cave people days, 200,000 years ago, where women were more dependent upon men for their survival. And today, most women have are fully capable of financially taking care of themselves, at least here in the United States, for the most part, that you are not dependent upon men for your sovereignty. 
But Jonathan, men are supposed to be the provider protectors. They're supposed to do all that work. And all I'm supposed to do is be the nurturer and submit to him. Folks, you can adopt that. You can adopt that traditional role, that traditional model. You have a one in 50, you have a one out of two chance that that relationship's going to be end. That relationship will end and you are on your own. And if you're in your, uh, in your second or third marriage, you have a 65 to 75% chance of it ending. So let me be clear. Dependency on anyone or anything will directly affect your emotional well-being. So coming back to this post I'm sharing about dating, it is very, it is, it is challenging to navigate the emotions of engaging with another human being, being even being vulnerable as if just even writing an email to someone or a text message to someone can be a very vulnerable act. And I will tell you, there are coaches out there that will trivialize this. There are those motivational and empowerment coaches that can tell you to, you can push through through anything through willpower. You know, a simple text message can be an incredibly vulnerable thing. And the fact is, is many people, this pushing through it through willpower is actually emotionally devastating. I can't tell you how many times even a miscommunication on a text message with someone caused me to recoil, to go the other direction, to not want to communicate with them. Because the reality is, is we weren't meant to meet through these environments. We were meant to meet face to face and get a full flavor of a person. And yet this is the medium that we are we are so accustomed to and it isn't going to change. You know, I wish I could tell you, just go do what you love. Just go do what you love. Go do things like painting. Go do an art class. Go to a meetup group and you'll meet your soulmate there. Look it, I get this happens for people. It does. It's like a broken clock, it happens twice a day, but the reality is, is it's rarely happening organically. The only way you're going to shift that organically is if you are in an environment where everybody is single and they're interacting with one another. In fact, I'll be hosting a live event at the end of March, and I'm going to start curating singles events. So people with men and women alike, 50, 50 men, 50 women, at least there's a better chance when you're in a pool of people instead of just randomly hoping you meet someone at the grocery store. And you're probably going, what the heck does this have to do with this topic? It's because I think we have to recognize that our it isn't about finding the right guy. If you're a woman and it's not about finding the right you know, gal, if you're a man, this is about finding the relationship within yourself. So these nine classy behaviors aren't going to be simple things like, um, you know, brush your teeth or wear nice clothes. You know, we're going to go deeper into the emotional attributes that are actually attractive to that emotionally grown up man. Okay. And I'm hoping, raise your hand, say, John, or hit that like button if you say, Jonathan, I want an emotionally grown up man, or write that in the chat box, okay? Okay, so these are the behaviors that are classy for both men and women alike that both emotionally grown up men and emotionally grown up women appreciate in the gender that they're going after. Okay, so the first one, this is simple, actions matching words. You know, in our current dating environment, it saddens me how trivial we treat people, how dismissive we treat people, particularly when it comes to our actions and our words. Whether you're a man or woman, this is, this is commensurate no matter what gender is uh, out in the dating marketplace. We see human beings who say one thing and they do another because the truth is, is we trivialize people. I say we, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you don't think you do, but I'm sure there have been times, I know I've done it, I've been dismissive, I've trivialized, because when they're a total stranger, you have nothing invested in them. See, our actions matching words has more value when we have something to gain or something to lose. 
And I'm here to invite everyone to operate from a place of integrity, or at least do your best to operate in integrity. And I get, as I started this broadcast by saying, look, we can feel disillusioned. We can feel frustrated. It can be brutal. It can be the hunger games out there. All I'm offering you is putting the odds more in your favor. So actions consistently matching words. I'm sure you'd agree with that. Number two, be generous and kind. You know, believe it or not, I'm, I'm going to tell you as a man, I've gone on what feels like thousands of dates, and that's not the actual number, but it just feels that way. Can anyone relate to that? It feels like you've met a lot of different people. I can tell you there have been a lot of times where women have been rather selfish, and it doesn't sit well with me. And I'm sure you've experienced men who, haven't, who have been selfish. Being generous and kind? See, I think the reason why early dating we are not seeing this is because everybody's defensive. They've got their walls up. They're trying to protect themselves. And what's happening is the minute you have a wall up, you have lost your capacity. Okay, you have a propensity, let me put it that way, to be less generous and kind because there's a wall up. I'm here to offer that you operate from a place of generous and kindness with no walls up in the early stages of dating. And if you have a wall up, then go tear that wall down and then revisit dating when that Tear down that wall, Mr. Gorbachev. <laughs> hey, has anyone seen the movie Atomic Blonde with uh, Charlize Theron? Um, it is, uh, anyways, it's about the uh, the fall of the Ber uh, Berlin Wall. But that's what we need to do. We have to drop our walls because without it, we won't, as much as we think we're generous and kind, the wall is blocking what's innately already inside of most of you. So, Generous and kind. Number three, they communicate clearly without being right. You, or ladies and men, they, they communicate clearly without being right. You know, we, we are rather selfish and righteous here in the United States. I can't speak for other parts of the world, but there's this almost belief that we're, we're almost at a war with, with the opposite sex. I'm right and you're wrong. I see this habitually. Ladies, I, I'm going to I'm going to suggest to you there are always two sides to a story, particularly in a relationship. And believe me or believe it or not, the, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. So learning to communicate clearly without being right. Now I'm not suggesting I'm right here. I'm just offering perspective. You make up the choice. Okay, but at the same time, I think a classy behavior that quality or high a gr emotionally grown up men notice and appreciate is a woman that can communicate clearly without being right. Number four, they don't use people. They are clear about commitment. I think this is where I, I've seen this with a lot of men and women as well. They are not clear about right up front the standard they're looking for. And I know a lot of women that use men for a free meal. You know, that let me just tell you something, ladies. This is not cool. This is not cool. I, I from somewhere I read in the younger generation, 30% of women who are actively dating are just doing it for a free meal. That's using someone. You know, that's a perfect example of using someone. And even if you're not, I, I actually spoke to another woman. This is another example. She says, I'm not ready to be in a relationship, but I'm just going out to have a good time. Usually, and she says, the men always pay. And I'm like, wait a minute. You clearly know you're not ready for a relationship. You pretend to be ready for a relationship, but you clearly know it. But you always, but in the back of your mind, you go, well, I can always change my mind. But if you go in with that kind of intent, you will use people. And I'm going to tell you, that's a classless act. And I've seen so many women do this, and I see men do this. I remember early after my divorce, I was a train wreck, but I thought I was ready for a relationship. And then the, the times I knew I wasn't ready for a relationship, I wasn't dating. In fact, quite frankly, many of you know I have a significant relationship that ended seven months ago. I have not gone on one date. I'm still processing, I'm still grieving. I've got myself my 
my, my toes in the water and I hold space that I will connect with someone, but I, I, I really have only communicated with one person and it's only because they recognize me professionally. Anyway, okay, number five, they have their act together emotionally, physically, spiritually. They have their act together, particularly when I say emotionally and physically, they don't need drugs or alcohol to get through the day. Do you know there's a lot of people that use drugs and alcohol throughout the day just to get by through the day? Because emotionally, and, and they actually, dating is a um, is kind of a self-medication for people. Just that brief encounter, that brief interaction with another human being causes many people to put themselves out in the dating marketplace. Well, let me tell you something. One of the most classy behaviors and things men find very attractive is a woman who has her act together emotionally, physically, spiritually in her life, okay? She's not in constant chaos. By the way, ladies, you can't stand men who are in constant chaos. There is nothing attractive about a person that's going through a lot of emotional upheaval in their life or physical upheaval. For example, a divorce. A divorce is an incredibly traumatic experience. Dealing with a, with a contentious ex-spouse. You know, if that's what you're dealing with, it's going to make it very problem. By the way, guys are not attracted to women who have contentious ex-spouses. You ladies will be, well, let me reframe that. Emotionally grown-up men and emotionally grown-up women are not attracted to somebody who has a contentious relationship with an ex-spouse. An emotionally dysfunctional person will look past that and go, well, you know, I see the potential. So let me hang my hat on this person. But you know that phrase, you know, you're buying, you know, you're buying the cow, you're buying, you're not just buying the cow, you're buying the farm, you're buying the manure, you're buying everything else associated with it. If you're choosing somebody who doesn't have their act together. Number seven. Number seven. They are introspective and work on themselves to grow beyond their limitation, wounds, and traumas. Let me repeat that. They are introspective and work on themselves to grow beyond their limitations, wounds, and traumas. Folks, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a big proponent of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. It's why I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? And I continually promote book after book, one particular book, is called the Hoffman Process, the Hoffman Process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and adult traumas. An introspective person is aware that they, they are aware that they can be triggered, they can be, get defensive, they can judge, and they look inward and always go and ask and say to themselves, I'm the common denominator here. And so an introspective person wants to grow past their negative patterns, their limiting beliefs in their life, to grow past their uh, limitations, their wounds and traumas. And by the way, a trauma or wound doesn't have to be like an abusive parent or uh, physically abusive or emotional abusive. You could have had a minor trauma that could have ripple effects in your life. And so something that's a really classy behavior is that person that's working on themselves, whether it's a man or woman. Okay. I think this is a classy behavior, a woman who's a nurturer, protective, and empathetic. A nurturer, protective, and empathetic. Now, for the man, for the woman who seeks the man, he's a protector, he's a nurturer, and empathetic. I think protection and nurturing go hand in hand. When you're with a partner who, you know, being protective of them is a very classy thing to do. Being a nurture for them. I don't care if you're a man or woman. It's the capacity to do both. But being empathetic isn't just about the capacity to feel someone's feelings. It's the capacity to genuinely care about someone's feelings. So being protective, nurturing, and empathetic. And last but not least, number nine. They believe demonstrating trust is paramount in their life. And trust isn't just in relationship about fidelity. Trust is, I have this other person's best interest at hand. 
There is nothing classier than actually having someone else's best interest without compromising yourself. You do not, this is not about compromising yourself, having someone's best interest. But I'm gonna tell you, we build trust through, through caring about another person's best interest. And these are the nine classy behaviors men and women notice and find wildly attractive. And I'm talking about that emotional grown up person and not that person who's dysfunctional or have clinical issues. Folks, I recognize we are in a difficult dating environment. If you need some support, do you see this link right here to schedule a discovery call with me? There's links below. I invite you to schedule a call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My whole area of expertise is to talk about discernment, which will amplify your intuition so you can recognize those people who's on the same page with you much sooner rather than later. And as I said earlier, it's the Hunger Games out there, and my job is to forever put the odds in your favor. Bada bum bum. Hey, if you found value in this conversation, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you uh, if you cared for this video, please hit this like, hit the like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And if you want to connect with me directly, check out those links below to schedule a discovery call with me, to find my group called Midlife Love Mastery, uh, to find me on Instagram, to get the books I recommend as well. All right. It's time for Q&A. If you have a question, write the word question and then post the question there after. Or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. There's a little dollar sign in the chat box. All the monies from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there. He's my son who passed away over five and a half years ago in his honor. We donate to causes like the Hoffman Process Insight Institute and also uh, scholarships to private coaching as well. So hit that little dollar sign. Our goal tonight is $50. We would appreciate some love tonight. Uh, also, if you'd like to speak to me live, I'm putting a link to the um, to. Um, to, so you can join the hot seat if you'd like to talk to me live. So again, if you have a question, post the question thereafter. So I want to share with everyone something I posted in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Um, bear with me a second while I pull this up. And again, there's a link below to uh, join my group. Um, so hopefully I can find this. Um, okay, so... Uh, bear with me one second. It's good. But this was a very vulnerable post that I had about my feelings about um, our current dating environment. And I hope you can appreciate this. Um, let me just find it. It's just going to take a second. It was a rather personal share. Um, oh, hopefully I can find Okay. In full transparency, my heart is just not into dating. Dating is not only a vetting process, but also a search process. This means you have to put yourself out there to be found. And therein lies the rub. Connecting with various people, engaging with them via text, and within minutes, you can feel, um, I feel a misalignment or worse, a disconnect. In those moments, I want to abandon all communication, which feels rude. These starts and stops, starts and stops, starts and stops are exhausting, which causes me to recoil. And in the, in the pullback, I feel like giving up. And yet throwing in the towel goes against my true desires. People ask me all the time, is there a better way? Sure, you can go out in public and do what you love. And just like the broken clock, it rarely works. And you can do the law of attraction. But look, if you work from home like me, it's you're hoping that someone knocks on your front door. Anyways, this was a vent, and why I'm sharing this with everyone is I suspect you feel the same way. I don't think we were meant to do all of these starts and stops, starts and stops, starts and stops. This is why we have to become better detectives early on. First, by operating in those nine classy behaviors I talked about is going to better prepare you. When you genuinely love yourself, you won't feel as, look at I'm just venting for a moment. I'm back on the saddle again, but I'm just venting for a moment. 
because I know everyone can relate to this. There's nothing easy about finding a life partner that's really an emotional grown up, especially when we're swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality. So I'm just merely here to say, I get it. I mean, I get it. And I wish I could blow smoke up your ass and sell you some swap land, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. So if you have some questions for me, post some questions or join me live. Oh, by the way, I want to thank Beach Lover for the $10 super sticker. Thank you so much. And I want to give props to Margaret for the $8 super sticker and Roller Girl for the $2 super sticker. That means we're $20 and Poultry Flowers just gave us $5. That means we're only $25 away from our goal. And we have a question from Gigi. In your experience, where do you see online dating going? Wall Street experts thinks the apps are losing subscribers. You know, there. So I, I think Bumble just laid off. I think I think out of fourteen hundred employees, I could be wrong on the numbers here. They just laid off three hundred employees. That's Bumble. I don't think dating apps are going away. They still represent the number one place people are meeting. I think what would be better if people just put together better profiles, they would have greater success. I'm going to tell you, I look at women's profiles habitually and they're pathetic and men's profiles are ridiculously pathetic. I'm going to say on average, less than one out of a hundred do I see a really good quality profile that's complete, concise, well done. It's like if I worked for a company and I had to review resume after resume after resume after resume after resume, and I just saw nothing but people that just, you know, it's like they went to the job interview with in their pajamas. Um, I think. I don't think there's going to be something magical that's going to revert us back to um, organic way of meeting either. I think you have to listen. Finding a life mate is going to require some Herculean effort. First, to be emotionally grown up, to be in a relationship, and then putting yourself out there to be seen. I'm here to say you have to be willing. You have to be willing to do a lot of work. And if you're not willing to, and we are spoon fed here in the United States of self serve, easy McDonald's type of environments, self serve kind of environments. So I think the human beings who do genuinely make heroic effort will get to have better results. That's just my opinion, Gigi. So thank you. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's keep going. Power of Chi just wrote, question, in your opinion, what does toxic positivity mean where you have experienced it recently? Hey, Google, what does toxic pass, uh, po uh, positivity mean? I just want to hear what Google says. According to Wikipedia, toxic positivity or positive toxicity is dysfunctional emotional management without the full acknowledgement of negative emotions, particularly anger and sadness. So... I think people who don't honor your pain and try to gaslight it or spiritually bypass someone's pain could be perceived as toxic pos positivity. I think that is quite possible uh, and happens. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge people's pain and not to Again, spiritually bypass someone with some rhetoric that, you know, you can just magical thinking is going to change everything. Um, have I experienced it? Yeah, but I mean, not enough to make a big deal. Like, I don't need to put a fucking label on it, okay? So some people are just, you know, some people are trying to help and they don't do it in the best way. You know... <laughs> I don't like the way we label things toxic. Okay, it might be uncomfortable, it might be annoying and that sort of thing. And you by the way, and it's and you can speak up and say, "Look, I don't want to hear it anymore." That's you can stand in your power too. So, um but that's just my 10 cents on that one power of G. So, by the way, folks, if you want to ask me questions like this, I'm happy to do things outside of the dating realm. Um but yeah, NW says, how do you deal with a text from no contact? I want him regret. 
How do you deal with a text from no contact I want him to regret? And Debbie, I don't understand your question, so thank you for trying, but I just don't understand the question. Barbara says, I think apps should do away with algorithms and simply spray everyone that paid and show them all up rather than filter through 100,000 resumes than just a handful of algorithms. Um, you know, one way you can bypass that is do a search. Okay, you do a search by by one year. In other words, you, you pick an age like 49 and you do a five mile search and you'll probably find 20 people that fit that category. And then you go to 50 and you go through 20 people that fit that category. I think you can actually bypass the algorithms by being really succinct. I, I believe, I, I'm assuming that will work, but I don't know if the algorithms are intentionally avoiding people. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that, but I think do searches by, hey, just do at age 49. 50, 51, 52, do a five mile radius and then, or, or expand it to a hundred miles and narrow. Like that's, that's just some ideas I have to work around some of the algorithms. Um, but I get it, Barbara, you're a recruiter. So you think along the same lines as I do. So I get it. So thank you. Uh, Jane Spitfire says, I missed the classy behaviors. You're just going to have to go back and watch. I started about the seven minute mark. If you want to follow back then. Okay. Power of Chi says, thank you for your opinion. Oh, here's the seven or the nine, it's, or here's five of them anyway. Actions matching words, be generous and kind, communicate clearly without being right. Don't use people, have their act together, uh, healed from past relationships. Oh, I forgot to say, yeah, I said healed from past relationships. They're introspective and work on themselves. They are protective and they believe demonstrating trust. You know what, folks? I actually missed one of these. They have healed from past relationships. That was number six, six, seven, six. I forgot to include that. I am so sorry in the original nine, okay? So they have healed from past relationships. I kind of touched upon that with the... Um, with the um, person that has a contentious ex, but I forgot to include that. So I know in my previous one, I did eight. That was uh, number six on the list. So thank you. Uh, Sunshine Labardi says, did you ever think about having your own dating site? Sure, I think about it all the time. If someone wants to hand me $1 million to make it happen, I will gladly create a dating site if someone wants to hand me that money and they can have all the half of the proceeds. Marianne says, question, I'm curious about your upcoming event. Is it going to be a seminar, a dinner, a dance? Tell me about it. Yes, so I am hosting a live event. It's a singles mixer. It's going to be at a restaurant. Uh, they have a section in the restaurant that can fit about 50, 60 people. Um, it's going to be open to both men and women. I will do about an hour and a half of conversation starting at 7 p.m. at night. Uh, that's going to take us till about 8.30, and then it's going to be a mixer where people can interact with one another. My goal is to do this once a month in Los Angeles. As um, I, I, mean the pro, I don't get to keep any of the money because it's going to the person who's putting it on for me. I'm doing it because I want people to start connect, kind of like, um, uh, like speed dating in a way, but it's not speed dating because you get to interact with people whom you wish to. Okay, so thank you, Marianne. I appreciate that. Amy, thank you for the $5 super sticker. That means we only have 20 more dollars to go for tonight to hit our $50 goal. Julie Engel is in the house. Jonathan, this may be random, but why are women standoffish with me and men have no problem talking to me, especially in the workplace? Okay. I I vague, I, I remember still. I didn't study this, but I, I posed I I posed a question in my Facebook some years ago. I did a poll. And this seems to be very, this seems to be an interesting dynamic between women and women. I believe women probably on some subconscious or instinctual level believe that they're in competition with each other um, for resources. So they're very competitive in the work environment. And since men aren't competing with them in the same way, men can be very generous to the women in the workplace and vice versa. 
Um, I believe there's some underlying instinctual or subconscious uh, competition going on between women. Women, you ladies can be fucking brutal to one another. I mean, the cattiness I've witnessed over the years. God, I've watched movies where this happens. So I, I'm. that's just my understanding. I am not a be behavioral scientist or an expert to give you the real concise reason, but that's just my rough thoughts on that. So thank you, Julie, for that question. Um, okay, and MJ just pointed out, I forgot the, it's six, seven, and eight, so I forgot to include nine. So again, I forgot to include they healed from their past relationships. So thank you. Oh, there you go. You added it right there. So there you go. Thank you so much. Power of Chi said, the last guy I dated wouldn't shut up about this ex is exes. Oh my God. I can't tell you how many times I've gone on a first or second or third date with someone who they just wouldn't shut up about their past relationships. Oh, that red flag, red. No, that was deal breaker, deal breaker, deal breaker, deal breaker. <laughs> I get it. Whether it's a man or woman, someone who's hung up on their past clearly isn't ready. But they think they are because they want to see the problem is we humans, you know, like there's a hole inside of us when a relationship ends and we want to fill that hole immediately. We've got to do our best to fill our that hole with our own self-love. Mel Stiller says, my personal experience has taught me something very important. Never jump from the flames into the fire. Amen to that. Amen to that. Power of Chi says, oops, here we go. Power of Chi says, it's very true, Jonathan. Women compete with other women in the workplace. Yeah, why, ladies, why is that? You shouldn't be in competition. You should be on the same side. Mel says, women are extremely competitive and can be very nasty to each other. It's kind of ironic. I mean, isn't it? Isn't it kind of sad? And why I say humans are rather dysfunctional. That's a perfect example. Sally, question, wait. So you want someone to hand you all the money to start up a dating site and they only get half the profit? Wouldn't you be working as the employee and manager and get 50% of the profit? By, by the way, I just was off the cuff ripping. So yeah. <laughs> but if someone wants my expertise, I don't know. Um, and that's why I'm not going to do it because I don't expect it. Hey, does anyone want to join the hot seat tonight? Join the hot seat. Um, it'd be fun to have someone on live. Gigi said, brutal. A neighbor bought 14 of her friends to my house because her husband stared at me too long at a party. The beaches are over 65. I don't understand that. Okay. Men respect each other more, brotherhood. You know, men can be, by the way, men can be ridiculously comp competitive as well. I just think in the workforce, they're not nasty about it, but men can be ridiculously comp competitive as well. I mean, you know, it's one of the reasons why, well, anyway, um, I, I'm, you know, it's just, it's just a fact of life. You know, there is a component of human basic need for survival. And within that, oftentimes people are very myopic to their actions towards other people. That's just my rough perception on that. Okay. Lighthouse, or excuse me, Sherry says, Lighthouse men compete against each other as well. It's more about image, status, and money. Yeah, exactly. Mel says, but it's true, Jonathan, if you want your reputation to be destroyed, hang out with women for a few minutes and you'll get your wish. I don't get that one, but thank you. Okay, Barbara says, I'm a woman and things are actually changing both professionally and in the working. It was because we had limited resources. We're slowly gaining more resources from, from even men and competition is balancing out. Okay, that's good to hear. Julie says men are territorial. Very true statement. We men can be very territorial. Um, Sherry says, I see men bullying and competing at work. Yeah, that happens. That happens. 
Lighthouse seems to think that men protect each other more than women. You know, I'm I'm grateful I'm not in the day-to-day -day work environment because I got a okay, I had a colleague of mine. We went out to lunch. I had a I had a referral for um the the to do business with these two people. And I brought one of my contemporaries. And we would all be able to work with these two people, but I went to the bathroom. And I was gone maybe five minutes, let's say. And when I came back, he and I, we wrapped up the lunch and we uh, came back to the office. And I got a text message from, or a call from one of the women. She said, hey, Jonathan, I want to let you know what happened. Your colleague threw you under the bus. He was critical of you. He complained about you. He judged you. And, and I'm like, and she goes, because you and I are friends, I'm letting you know what he did. And I'm thinking to myself, what a fucking asshole. You know, I'm doing you a favor by introducing you to someone you could network with and you threw me under the bus. Now, there are some things I could say about this that would be politically un incorrect. So I'm not going to say what I believe happened, but what a fucking asshole. Anyway, so yes, men do it as well. Mel says survival has to do, or competition has to do with survival of the species. Exactly. Mel, Sally says, Mel, you almost said, but Jonathan, <laughs> but Jonathan. <laughs> oh, folks. Hey, do we have any questions? Uh, the answer, no, he was not. Uh, he was married with children. Okay. Um, so um, I don't think it had anything to do with that. Julie says, okay, Jonathan, what if a random guy that random guy that us as a mutual friend would send a dick pic, LOL, never responded hardly at all, total turnoff to me? Yeah, I think guys who send dick pics and sending naked pictures to one another is just, just not a classy thing to do. Although I've been criticized that my profanity isn't a classy thing, but... I'm here to say that expletives are used to enhance a sentence. And I recognize for some of you that my profanity or cursing is offensive to you. I get that. And you know what? And I recognize that I can't please everyone. I can't please everyone. I just use it for effect, okay? I use it for effect. And if it bothers you, I understand if you don't want to watch my videos, okay? And I do it for a little bit, I do it for the humor as well. So. And as Sharon says, F them all. Okay, thank you. Ariel says, what do you think of making a dating app with only video profiles? Hmm. Okay, I've got something personal to share with you guys, ladies, okay? My ex-wife and I met through a video dating service. Now, let me give you a little bit of the backstory, okay? So this was 1990, it was January of 1990. And back then there used to be a company called Great Expectations that um, you would go into their office, you pay thousands of dollars, you would record a video, it would be put into a library, there would be like a little profile, a picture of you with a little essay, and then a person would come in, oh, they would match you up with, or you know, you would review the profiles and pick people you wanna meet, and you'd watch a video of theirs. Sure enough, my now ex-wife, Erin, had, we. this was a new company that opened up in Gardena, which is the city next to Redondo Beach, okay? And, um, and they put out all these flyers all over Redondo Beach, video dating service, this is 1990, okay? And so I looked through a few of the profiles. I, I put in my request for someone. Well, it turns out she saw my profile and put a, oh no, I saw her profile and put a request I'd like to meet her. So then she had to physically drive to the location, view the profile, watch the video, and then agree whether or not she'd meet me. And it turns out I recognized her. See, it used to be she, uh, she uh, used to be she worked as a cocktail waitress at Cheesecake Factory. Now, she was also at the same time, she was putting herself through college. She had a job as an accountant, and this was her side hustle to make some extra money. And I knew her because the bartender there was an old high school friend of mine. So anyway, when I saw her profile, I said, hey, I recognized you. And she remembered who I was. 
And so we had a date. We went to El Torito's on the pier. I can actually see it right there. All the blinds are down right now. But El Torito's like right there. I think it was January 20th, 1990, somewhere around that time. And we had a first date that turned into a second date that turned into a third date that turned into a fourth date. We eventually started hanging out with my friends. You know, it was interesting. I and mean, I don't think we slept together for quite some time. By the way, dating was so different back in the 1990s. It wasn't about getting laid. It was actually about getting to know someone. It was vastly different than today. Because there used to be, you know, you had to jump through more hoops to get into, to sleep with someone. You had to be in relationship with someone to sleep with someone. Except for one night stands, you meet someone at a bar, you're drunk and two people go home together. Okay. Anyway, that is how I met my now ex-wife. We met through a video dating service back in 1990. I was up mid late late twenties back then. Anyway, I hope you appreciate that little story. Um, Beach lover says, "Oh, great expectations! That's how I met my husband thirty five years ago. Way to go!" Um, okay, Amy is in the house. Five months relationship transition to friends for me, but not for him. Do not want do not want to block him, but he won't accept. Don't know what to do. I need to move on to better match. You know, this is the tough thing when you still have feelings for someone and maybe you even wish to get back together with them. I think that's what you're saying is um, you're blocking him. I don't know what to do. I need to move on. Wait. Five months of transition for friends for me and not for him. So he, if, if, if he doesn't want to be friends, it's because he, I'm sorry, maybe he's dealing with the pain and he needs to have, you know, uh, space from any friendship because being friends with someone requires sometimes being rather being, you see, it's one thing to be a social friend with someone. It's another thing to be an intimate friend. And when you've been physically intimate with someone, it's very difficult to transition that because a lot of times there's an emotional dependency going on. So he's sounds like he's created a clear wall that he just doesn't want to go there. And I guess your job is to accept that, grieve it, and then move on. Accept it, grieve it, and move on. Mel Stiller says, eons ago, in the age of dinosaurs, I met my husband, number one, at a family barbecue. Many moons later, I met number two. I was out with friends and we went to a bar. Guess which marriage lasted longer? <laughs> I don't know. Which marriage lasts longer? Please let us know, Mel. Power of Chi says, how do you, how do you decompress and recharge your social dating battery? after dealing with so many dates with draining women? Well, first off, I haven't, the, the, the speed dating I used to do or serial dating was years ago. I mean, today I am very selective on whom, I'm, whom I will communicate with. And my hope is that I'm, that being selective, um, that, so I'm, I'm actually interacting with so few people. In fact, as I said before, I haven't gone on a date with anyone because no one has sparked my fancy enough to want to go on a date with them. Um, again, most dating profiles are so poorly done that I'm, I'm rather not interested in many of them. So how do you recharge your batteries? You know, I hold a vision. It's like the law of, it's not the law of attraction. It's the law of assumption. I've already assumed this person is in my life. I just already assumed it. I'm just holding space for when she enters in the front door, not literally, figuratively. So um, I just hold space that that, it's, I already make the assumption that that person is in my life. Okay. That's how I, I recharge my battery. Sally says, do you have, do you have dances in America? In UK growing up, we used to meet and go dancing at clubs. Now at a certain age, places to do that aren't, the, there aren't any. Life was better in the 80s. I love the 80s, going out to bars and go dancing. Yes, you can still go dancing. 
Um, but they're not the same as they used to be. There aren't as many bars where you go dancing, at least locally here, where that was called a nightclub, which had dancing associated with it. So, yeah, um, but they do exist, okay? They do exist. Julie says, that's true, Jonathan. Now everyone wants to get laid. I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh, uh, Barbara says, Bumble and Hinge, I forgot to mention that, do allow you to put uh, videos up on your site. Um, I don't believe Match.com allows that, but I do. I, I, I know for certain Bumble and Hinge um, uh, for certain uh, allow that, okay? Disco tax, yes. Amy says, I love the 80s. Oh, Mel gave us the answer. Marriage number one lasted longer. I have two sons in 10 years. He decided to walk out and play footsie with another woman. So, well, does lasting longer mean anything? I don't know. Does it matter if someone was married 30 years or three years? Is that big? Like, they still ended. Anyway. I'm going to repeat those nine classy behaviors because I screwed up in the original one, okay? And we're going to wrap up for tonight. Number one, their actions match their words consistently. Number two, they are generous and kind. Number three, they communicate clearly without wanting to be right. Number four, they don't use people. They are clear about the type of commitment they seek. Number five, they have their act together. Number six, they have healed from past relationships. Number seven, they are introspective and work on themselves to grow beyond their limitations, wounds, and traumas. Number eight, they are protective, nurturing, and empathetic. And number nine, they believe trust is paramount in their life. And those are the classy behaviors that men and women will notice and find incredibly attractive if you're an emotionally grown up man and emotionally grown up woman. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on all this. As always, if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. Also, if you want to connect with me, schedule a discovery call. There's links below to uh, schedule a call with me to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to find me on Instagram, to get all the books I recommend and my dating vows as well. We're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrett of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. And Amy wants to remind us, Trust is paramount. Exactly. Beach Lover says, good job, J.A. Margaret says, thank you. Beach, uh, wait, Sally says, uh, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Net Detective says, hugs. Power of Chi says, thank you. Phyllis says, live, yes, live chats are good. I want to thank all of you that donated to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund. I am so grateful for all of you. You are wonderful human beings to be so generous with me. And mostly importantly, that I am grateful that I can help make a difference in many of your lives. So thanks for putting up with my profanity and expletives every now and again. I am truly grateful. And I just want to give you all a big, gigantic hug of appreciation. Thanks a bunch. Wishing you all a super duper wonderful, fantastic evening.